ready for stories today? Excellent. I have quite a few. I don't know if we'll get through all of them, but the first one, it's kind of a long one, but I think you'll really like it. There's a good lesson here. It's called The Little Red Hen. Okay, did you ever hear this story? Do you know it? Yeah. Some of you know it and some of you don't. You do? Okay. This is about a hard-working hen. I don't know this. No, well, you listen and you tell me if you like it, okay? I don't remember what, what it's about, but I remember when you did. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Once upon a time, a cat and a dog and a mouse and a little red hen all lived together in this cozy little house. Is it cozy? Yeah. I think so. The cat liked to sleep all day on the soft couch. Doesn't he look comfy? Yeah. And the dog liked to nap all day on the sunny back porch. He looks comfy too, right? Mm -hmm. And the mouse liked to snooze all day in the warm chair by the fireside. See, he's napping too. So, the little red hen had to do all of the housework. She cooked the meals and washed the dishes and made the beds. She swept the floor and washed the windows and mended the clothes. She raked the leaves and mowed the grass and she hoed the garden. And one day, when she was hoeing the garden, she found some grains of wheat. Who will plant this wheat? cried the little red hen. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. I don't know when I read that. Each morning, the little red hen watered the wheat and pulled the weeds. Soon, the wheat pushed through the ground, and it began to grow very tall. When the wheat was ripe, the little red hen asked, Who will cut this wheat? Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. When the wheat was all cut, the little red hen asked, Now, who will take this wheat to the mill to be ground into flour? Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then I will, said the little red hen, and she did. The little red hen returned from the mill carrying a small bag of fine white flour. Who will make a cake with this fine white flour, asked the little red hen. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the mouse. Then what? I will, said the little red hen. And she did. She gathered sticks and she made a fire in the stove. Then she took milk and sugar and eggs and butter and she mixed them in a big bowl with that fine white flour. When the oven was hot, she poured the cake batter into the shining pan and she put it in the oven. Mmm, soon a delicious smell filled the cozy little house. The cat got off the soft couch and she strolled into the kitchen. The dog got up from the sunny back porch and she came into the kitchen. The mouse jumped down from the chair and she scampered right into that kitchen. The little red hen was just taking a beautiful cake out of the oven will eat this cake, she asked. I will, said the cat. I will, said the dog. I will, said the mouse. 
But the little red hen said, all by myself. I planted the wheat, I tended the wheat, I cut the wheat, I took the, the wheat to the mill to be ground into flour, and all by myself, I gathered all those sticks, I built the fire, I mixed the cake, and all by myself, I am going to eat it. Uh oh. And so she did to the very last crumb. After that, you know what happened? Whenever there was work to be done, the little red hen had three very eager helpers. And that's the end. Well, this is called Martha Doesn't Share. Martha has a new favorite word. And that word is mine. Do you know that word? She says it about her pancakes. She says it about her scooter. She says it about her dollhouse. She says it about her blanket, too. Mine. She says it about almost everything. Mine. See that? Mine. The cupcake is hers. The plant, mine. The chair, mine. And look at all those stuffed animals. What does she say? Mine. Mine. Mine? Mine? Asks her baby brother Edwin. No, mine, answers Martha. Martha's parents would like Martha and Edwin to share. How about taking turns, asked Martha's mother. You take a turn, and then Edwin takes a turn, says Martha's father. But Martha doesn't like taking turns. It's my night. No. Besides, she says, it's mine. Okay, says her mother as she walks away. Okay, says her father as he walks away. Okay, Mafa, says Edwin as he waddles away. Martha decides to put on her costumes. But it's not nearly as much fun being a magician when you don't have an audience. See, she's playing all by herself. Martha decides to put on her puppets. But it's kind of lonely being the wolf when you don't have the three little pigs. Doesn't seem to be a lot of fun when you're alone. Martha decides to play a game. But it's hard to ping when you don't have someone there to pong. Martha thinks about sharing. She thinks and she thinks and she thinks about it. Then she thinks about it some more. Martha decides to go to find her family. And look at little Edwin, he's jumping on his trampoline. Hi, Martha says quietly. Hi, Martha says her mother. Hi, Martha says her father. Martha's baby bro brother Edwin stops bouncing and laughing. He looks at Martha and the things she brought with her. Edwin says, Martha, could I bounce on your trampoline too? Martha's mother looks at Edwin. Martha's father looks at Edwin. What do you think he's going to say? Yeah. Yeah, Martha too. Martha too, shouts Edwin. Martha takes a deep breath. Edwin says, Martha, these are mine, but you can play with them too. Edwin smiles at his big sister, and Martha smiles back at him. Now, Whenever she can, Martha tries to share with Edwin. And she's getting better at sharing every day. It's a big castle, but she's getting good at sharing. Now she plays with her brother Edwin. Good. The baby Edwin tried to do the dot. He did? Oh. Okay. Thumbs up. Thumbs in the middle again.
Thumbs in the middle. I think we just like thumbs in the middle, right? Our next story is a fun one. It's kind of a guessing game. I know you guys like to guess, right? Yeah. All right, this is called, Do You Know Which Ones Will Grow? <laughs> You're laughing already? All right. Let's see if you know what grows. If you look around, you'll see some things grow like you and me. Others stay the way they're made until they crack or rust, or fade. Do you know which ones will grow? Think, then answer, yes or no. So what are you going to answer me? Yes, yes or no. no. All right, you ready? Yes no. Put your thinking caps on. No. If a duckling grows and becomes a duck, can a car grow? No. And become a, you don't even know, it could become a truck. No? No. All right. It fades away, if a cub grows and becomes a bear, is that yes? yes. Cub grows. And, can a stool grow? No. And become a chair? No. Are you sure? No. If a kitten grows and becomes a cat, yes? Yes. Can a cap grow? and become a hat? No. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. If a kid grows and becomes a goat. Yes. A kid, a kid is this little um, baby goat, is a kid. And he becomes a goat. Can a sweater grow and become a coat? Are you sure? No. If an owlet grows and becomes an owl, that can happen, right? Yeah. Yes. Can a washcloth grow? No. And how do you know it can't become a towel? No. No, it can't become a towel? No. Okay. So, yes to ducks? Bears and owls too? Yeah. Yes. Okay. No to trucks and chairs and towels? No. No. Okay. Yes to cats? Yeah. Yes to go yes to goats? Yeah. No to hats? No. Are you sure no to hats? Yeah. No to coats. No to coats. No to coats. Okay, they don't grow. All right. If a calf becomes grows and becomes a cow. Does that happen? Yes. All right. Then maybe a shovel grows and becomes a plow. No. No. <laughs> if a snakelet grows and becomes a snake, yes. can a cupcake grow and become a cake? No. No? Are you sure? No. no. You never saw a cupcake grow? No. <laughs> All right. If a piglet grows and becomes a pig, yes. Yes. can a pickup truck grow and become a rig? No. Really? No. If a kit, that's this little fox, grows and becomes a fox, yes. can a watch grow and become a clock? No. No? All right. If a joey grows, this is a joey right in there, and becomes a kangaroo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A person. Yeah. There's a person. Can a baby grow and become you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes to cows. Yes. Yes to snakes. Yes. Yes to pigs. Yes. Yes to a fox. No to plows? No. No to a big cake? No. No to a rig? No. How about to clocks? No. No. Yes to a jumping kangaroo or no? Yes. Yes. Yes to a living, growing you, right? 
You got them all right. All right, and this is our last story. Ready? Who's ready? Me. All right. Pete the cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much, he sang this song. Do you know the song? My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. Oh, you guys like that. That's a good song. When all of a sudden, pop. Oh, no. One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Three. So four minus one button equals three buttons. And there they are. Blue, green, and red. Three? Groovy, he said. Did Pete cry? No. Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. When pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Two. So three buttons minus one equals. Did Pete cry? No. Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons what? Go. Go. But he kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. When all of a sudden, pop! Oh no, another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? One. If he had two and one rolled away, he only has one. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my button, my one groovy button. My button, my button, my one groovy button. And pop! Oh no! The last button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Zero. 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 If you only have one and one rolls away, there's none left. Did Pete cry? Buttons come and buttons what? Go. Go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt, and what do you think he saw? His belly button. And he kept on singing his song. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. He can't lose that one. I guess it simply goes to show that stuff will come and stuff will go. But do we cry? No. Goodness, no. We keep on singing, right? And Pete says it's all good. And that's the end. That's the end. Did you like that one? I like that one, too. You guys did a great job today. Do we want to do a wrap-up song? We can do either Pearly Shells, which I know you love, or something else that you like. Pearly Shells! Pearly Shells again? All right, do you want to turn and face the camera so you can sing it to everybody at home? Do you remember how to sing it with the hand gestures and everything? Okay, you ready? When I say three, one, two, three. Pearly Shells, Pearly Shells. From the ocean, from the ocean, shining in the sun, shining in the sun.
covering the shore, covering the shore. When I see them, when I see them, my heart tells me that I love you more than all those little pearly shells, pearly shells. Great job, you guys. Wave to everybody. Say hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. <laughs>